<laughs> Our next speaker is Jack Horner. Jack directs the largest dinosaur field research program in the world in Bozeman, Montana. I'm not quite sure where to start with Jack because he's done so much. Don't, he served his country, as you can see. Jack is his own man. He served his country as a Marine in Vietnam. He's been on 60 Minutes with Leslie Stahl. He's a MacArthur fella. That and you'd rather hear from Jack than you would from me. So I'm going to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. oh, by the way, did I mention that he's the technical, he was the technical advisor for all of Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park movie? Seriously. Big deal. <laughs> Can, can I have the lights off? Please? Please? Pretty please? Whoop. Oh. All right, so Jason, that was a great story. I my I I can't I don't have anything like that. I dig up dinosaurs. So, my, my history is a little different. I went to high school, and I passed. <laughs> and I have a high school diploma. I got in 1964. And then I went to college at the University of Montana because all you had to have was a high school diploma. And so, I went for a bunch of years, and I flunked out. And I do not have any kind of credentials. I do not have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD, none of that stuff. But I got a job at Princeton University. <laughs> I don't know what that says, but. But anyway, I got a job at Princeton University in 1975, and, and I, was, I was fortunate. I was, I was very fortunate because Three years later, now I, I got a job as a technician. That means the lowest position you could have at Princeton University, <laughs> which was okay. Because I was from Montana and I was having a hard time adjusting to Princeton anyway. <laughs> so in 1978, I found some really cool dinosaurs. They were the, turned out to be the first baby dinosaurs found anywhere in the world, and so that was pretty cool. And so, but I was a technician and I needed some money to, so I could go back out and collect some more of these dinosaurs, and so I didn't know anything about writing grants and I didn't know anybody that had any money, and so, and so I did the one thing that I, the only thing that I could think of doing, I wrote to the Rainier Brewing Company because, because I drank a lot of their beer. And, and I asked for $10,000, and, and they actually agreed to give it to me. But Princeton University said, there is no way in this world you're going to take money from the Marineer Brewing Company. And so they gave me $10,000, Princeton University did, and the Rainier Brewing Company gave us 125 cases of beer. <laughs> and we made furniture. <laughs> so, so after that, Princeton, for some reason, thought that this was not going well, and so so they, uh, they act, somebody talked to somebody, I think, because the next year I actually got money from the National Science Foundation. And Princeton University gave me a, a raise. They promoted me from technician to research scientist, which was pretty, pretty cool. So, but I think they did that so they could get money from the National Science Foundation. <laughs> and so. For a few years, a couple of years, I had money from the National Science Foundation, and, uh, and then I ran into this guy who, from Montana, 
um, who said they were building a museum in Bozeman, Montana, and they needed a paleontologist. And so, well, they didn't really say that. Really what they said was they wanted the fossils that I was collecting and taking back to Princeton. And I said, the only way they could really have those is if they hired me. And so, and so in 1982, I was hired as a curator of paleontology. I mean, I was getting a lot of promotions in a big hurry with, for a guy that didn't have any degrees of any kind. But they told me I could be a curator of paleontology. Um, they would pay my salary, but I had to raise all the money for everything else, including exhibits in the museum and, and staff. And they, in other words, they wouldn't pay for anything. And so I accepted that. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I was a curator then. Anyway, so then, anyway, I, I managed to get some more money from the National Science Foundation, and we collected a lot of cool stuff. And what was really cool was we found 10 new species of dinosaurs, and we found more dinosaur eggs, and we found the first dinosaur eggs uh, with embryos in the world. I mean, it was really cool. You know, I love what I do. I just love it. I mean, I just, I love it. I like finding dinosaurs. Um, I didn't really like looking for money. That was not my favorite thing to do. But on the other hand, I really like dinosaurs. And so you have to find some money. And so as you all know, you have to go out and get it. So in uh, 1990, I started looking for donors. And I was very fortunate in Montana to find quite a few of them. And, uh, and so, uh, 1993, I actually ran into a woman named Vicki Gray, who is in our audience, and she introduced me to a, a number of people who became very good donors. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> so, by the mid-1990s, I had already, uh, we'd built a program that we had, we had people all over Montana um, collecting dinosaurs from different ages of rock. We were getting all sorts of things. We also uh, were able to get, I, I was actually able to hire an administrative assistant, a histologist, three preparators of my own, and uh, 12 graduate students. And as you can see here, the Merck Family Fund was a very big donor, um, and a number of other people. But, but I'm greedy. I really wanted more dinosaurs. And, and so, in 1998, I decided that I wanted to have more dinosaurs than anyone had ever collected in history. And so I went to the National Science Foundation and asked them for $500,000 for five years. And they said, first off, that's way too much money. We can't give you that much money. But second of all, that's not possible to collect more dinosaurs than anyone's ever collected in history. And especially where you want to go look. I wanted to go look in the Hell Creek Formation where Tyrannosaurus rex came from. I wanted to go get some more Tyrannosaurus rex specimens and I wanted some more triceratops specimens because it turns out that all of the people who had collected before were at places like Yale University and the American Museum and these kind of places, and they had collected them back in the old days when they forgot the whole, they, they didn't realize they had to have data with them. We had to know where they came from. And so, and so, I wanted to go out and get specimens that actually had data associated with them. And so I wanted to do, to do this. And so they said, no. They said, that's not possible. And so, so I did go out and, and I raised some money. Um, and this is where Vicky probably recognizes everyone on there. And uh, Nathan Miravold was the person who came forward and offered to uh, underwrite most of it. And we started that project, the Hell Creek Project. It became the largest 
paleontologic expedition in history. And, uh, and we were, because we had funding, we had a helicopter, we could go anywhere, we, could, we had boats, we had every kind of equipment you could possibly imagine. We were able to get dinosaurs out of places that no one had ever been able to get them before. And as a result, we ended up with a whole bunch of new, new Tyrannosaurus rex specimens. I don't know if you remember that the Field Museum not too long ago bought a Tyrannosaurus rex for $8.35 million. And for 850,000, we collected eight Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons. And we got a bunch of Triceratops skeletons and a whole bunch of other stuff. And, and it really, you know, it's one of the, it is one of the largest dinosaur collections ever made in the United States. And so that was pretty cool. But at the same time, we, uh, we got um, the Charlotte and Walter Kohler Charitable Trust to give us enough money to build a laboratory so that we could not only collect these, not only study them, but to look inside of them. So now what we want to do is take the bones and cut them open and actually look inside and learn something about their growth and their behavior, something no one had ever done before. Because, of course, who would want to cut open a bone? They're precious. Well, there's more, inf more information inside than there is outside, so we started cutting up bones, and bones are really cool inside. These are all dinosaur bones. These tell us how dinosaurs grow. And you can determine their age, their growth rate, their physiology, all sorts of things about an animal by looking inside of the bones. And so that's what we were doing. Anyway, we still do that. We have a histology lab that is just great. And then, in, and then we, we sort of ran out of that fund, and then we went to the Smithsonian and uh, Smithsonian wanted a T-Rex of their own, and they didn't have any, and I had a bunch. <laughs> and I told them that if they put a million dollars into my research fund that I would go find them one. And so they went out and found a donor, and I don't know who that donor is. Some of you might know who that was. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, we got a million dollars, and, and then we went out and found the Smithsonian a Tyrannosaurus rex. And we got a whole bunch of Triceratopses for us. In fact, we found more than 100 Triceratops specimens, 100 skeletons of Triceratops. Turned out to have, we found baby Triceratopses. No one had ever seen a baby Triceratops before because, well, they're little, and everybody in the old days, like at Yale and <laughs> the American Museum, wanted big dinosaurs in their museums. And so they forgot to collect the little ones. So I have a little museum, we have little dinosaurs. It's OK. <laughs> in 2006, we also had a great donation from Tom and Stacy Siebel. And we built our new dinosaur hall, which if you ever get a chance, you should come see. It is one of the best dinosaur halls in America, I assure you. And it's loaded in Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman, not very far, it's just north of here. <laughs> Go see it. All right. And unfortunately, I filled up the museum, and so it's full now. And uh, that seems to be our problem right now, is we don't have anywhere to put anything. So, so I decided we'd have a project in other countries. So we're now going out and collecting dinosaurs for other countries including Mongolia, Romania, South America. You know, we're, we're, we're doing all sorts of things. And we're also working on something called the Preservation Project that uh, Nathan Miravold put some money up for. And this is our attempt to get DNA out of a dinosaur. I was, I did work on Jurassic Park. They had DNA. I figured I could get some too. Uh, <laughs> turns out that, unfortunately, you can't get it out of an insect. Uh, and so we tried to get it out of dinosaurs. We did get proteins. We got collagen, keratin, and we even got heme from hemoglobin, but no DNA. So we're still working on that. We built a laboratory that we could actually take to the field so that we could get it fresh. And 
Unfortunately, um, we got better samples of proteins, but DNA just doesn't last long enough. And then, more recently, George Lucas came to us and gave us $1 million. And he gave it to us unrestricted. And he said, Jack, you can do anything you want with it. And so I decided to do something different. I started the Dino Chicken Project. <laughs> I can't clone a dinosaur, so now I'm going to retro-engineer one. And that's the whole notion. The whole idea is that dinosaurs gave rise to birds. And so can we reverse evolution and actually get the characteristics back? We are trying to do that in our laboratory in Montana and another laboratory at McGill University in Montreal. We are stimulating genes, and, and we are discovering how animals grow and how they develop. And we expect that in the not-too-distant future, we will go from having a chicken to a chickenosaurus. <laughs> so I want to thank all of these people, the people who have been generous enough to uh, donate lots of, our, of money for us to do all these wild and crazy things. But we are learning a great deal about dinosaurs. We are also learning a great deal about the kinds of things that will help us humans in the future and impact medical science if we can actually add a tail to a chicken. Thank you very much.